G'day all gums and non-gums. Part of the week is back. Good morning, gums and non-gums. Oh, it's an honour to get my gum cap. Mate, <laughs> hey, I am flushing them, eh? How you doing? Know? Kind of the right amount of rowdy. Always stay the right amount of rowdy. And always remain the right amount of rowdy. G'day everyone, welcome to the Right Amount of Rowdy podcast brought to you by the Gums Gallery. Today we're sitting down with another rugby player. So yes, we've gone bang, bang, bang with the rugby union players. Don't worry, we've got some cricketers and some leagueies coming in soon. But nonetheless, it's great to have this man on the pod. Uh, former Brumbies player, Sunwolves player and is now playing for the Yamaha over here in Japan. James Dargaville. We haven't played yet together, unfortunately, but it's on the to-do list, mate. Welcome to the pod. It's good to be here, man. Appreciate it. No worries. Awesome, mate. So you got out today for a quick nine holes? Yeah, actually 18, but just... 18? Course. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little... Uh, it's the cheapest golf option we have here. And it's, I think it's four par fours and five par threes. Yeah, nice. And how'd you play? It's a bit, bit of a go track. Uh, yeah. Went for the uh, the old nine hole scramble on one side, and yeah, the nine hole best ball. So there were three carts and just a bit of cart golf, yeah, get in and out, get it done pretty quick. So it was good. Were you happy with your game? How you hit them? Oh, mate, it, as you know, up in Chiba, mate, it blows like a hurricane just day after day this time of year. <laughs> so, mate, some decent shots turned into some ugly shots, and some nice thin to win ones ended up pin high. So, yeah. Absolutely. No, it, was, it was good fun. Good yeah. to get all the boys out together. Yeah, awesome. How many of it? Three carts were? So a couple of Yeah, there were six of us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Beauty. Yeah, yeah. Because um, usually they do the old four in one cart over here. Yeah. Well, pretty much every other option you have, it's a... Um, the two. Or is it a, a slow walk pace? Yeah. So you got to lock in pretty much the whole day if you uh, if you want to get out and play 18. So this has been a, a good find this year. We've just been able to sneak out even, get out for nine holes if we've got half a day off and things like yeah. that. So that's been good fun. A bit more like home. Yeah, 100%. Now, we're going to get into a bit of uh, Japanese golf um, yeah. later on. But we'll start off with um, some of the questions we ask everyone just to start us off. So handicap, mate. Where's your handicap at? It's at 15 at the moment. It's uh, had a slow and steady decline after a bit of time off, but uh, yeah. been getting out and playing a bit recently. So hopefully when I get home, I can uh, start grinding, get it back down. Yeah. So where, where's the best you've ever been to? Uh, I think my GA was like 11.8 or 9. Yeah. Yeah. And you're playing a lot of golf at that time? Yeah. Too much. More than rugby. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. And when you get back home, mate, what's the what's the home course? Uh, federal. We yeah. have a pretty good crew at the Brums uh, in Canberra playing at Federal. Um, yeah. But uh, Brad have a couple of rounds there while they were stuck in Canberra. It's a good good track. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's a pretty handy track, isn't it? Now, uh, awesome. And mate, favorite club in the bag? Well, I just recently got a little uh, driving iron. Because the I don't know what your uh, experience is like in Japan, but it's pretty narrow and a lot of OB. So I've just been dinking down my little three arm, which has been uh, turned out to be a good little investment. Yeah, it's something I need to invest in. That's for sure. Because I actually my favourite club in the bag used to be the three iron. So I used to yeah. because my driver is shocking. So I used to just hit three iron off the tee a lot just to get the ball in play. And one day I was playing and I, I, I snapped it like not on purpose. So I've hit it. And I get quite down on the ball as well. So I like compress it quite hard and keep that, you know, low. And I play at the coast out at Sydney. So a lot of wind like here as well. Anyway, it's just the club here's just going full, full, full. And that's, mate, it's on my to-do list is to get the old driving iron and, and invest in one of them. So you're saying it's... Yeah, get it back in the bag. Yeah, get it back in the bag. But um, yeah, and so what would you say your least favourite club is then? Oh, I'd say the driver. Yeah. Just the least consistent. And sometimes the uh, the old hosel rocket comes off the 60 degree wedge from about 50 metres out as well. Comes yeah, out at right That angles. happens to us all, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Righto. So we've just mentioned it a bit now and we spoke a little bit about it at the start. But, mate, I want you to sort of, you know, and to, to tell everyone or give everyone a bit of an insight who might be listening, um, what golf is like in Japan because 
it's a rude shock when you get here and it's not rude shock, but it's, it's, it's so different to what it's like back home. Um, so yeah, do you want to, do you want to give us a bit of a rundown of what your experience has been? And then I might chime in with some of the things I've experienced over here as well. Well, you need the whole day. It's a, it's a real investment of both yen and time. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it is a great experience. They do it really well. You know, you stop at halfway for an hour break and have a, a nice katsu curry and a yeah. really average coffee, yeah. but, um, maybe a couple of asahis, but <laughs> You know, it's, you pull up the front, drop your clubs off and yep. the uh, caddies are running around, bring all your clubs out the back. You get your little pass card with your number on it that you pay yep. for everything throughout the day. It's, uh, yep. you know, no, it's, it's, a, it's a well-run thing, but, you know, you, you get out there, shank some balls, but the, the, uh, it's a very, very slow pace of play. Um, yep. You're on a, a four-man buggy that takes you around the golf cart and it's at Matic. walking to be the best. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty tough. No, it's pretty funny, isn't it? And especially with the, um, the cards they give you. So it's basically like you're running the tab for yourself. Yeah. And, you yeah. Know, I remember going yeah, up and, and being like buying some balls and then they're like, oh, what's your number? Put it on the tab and it's like, oh, you know, oh, sweet. How good's that? And then you don't realise you buy a water. Then you buy some hand warmers if it's cold. During uh, yeah. during the winter, so the little little bags you have in, and keep your hands warm, and then you might get another one after nine holes, and you just keep putting on the tab, yeah. not even thinking about it. And then at the end, you you go to pay, and then it's like way more than what you originally thought it was going to be. But it's yeah, all part of experience. And then I don't know about you, yeah. but the first time I went and played, we, you know, it was like everyone went and had an onsen afterwards as well. So everyone went and had a had a bath, had got in the hot tub, um, and then after that, got dressed into like a, a nice shirt, and then went in and had like a little a little supper, like a like a chocolate cake, and then um, like a um, an iced coffee and all that as well. So it, they they don't miss, and like you said, it goes all day. It does. It is. We're usually uh, we've lost our patience usually by the end of the the 18 and we're just looking to get out as quickly as possible but we have had a couple of um, a couple of good rounds at some nice courses where you're pretty keen to hang around and have a few beers after and then head home yeah. home i've yet to get on the beers out here on the course but it's something that i really really looking forward to do one time because you do you have that mandatory hour break at half half time and you like you said you go in you have you have katsu curry and it's great but some people, that is just like a big no-no. Like I've played with some people who over here are just like, nah, that's like I'm losing my rhythm, go out. I'm not going to be able to go out and shoot a good score on the back nine because I've just had an hour break. What's your take on the old hour break at lunch? Oh, mate, it's tough. It's finding your first nine scoring pretty well. It's hard to come out after a pretty good break and a couple of Asahis to yeah. you know, come and keep shooting but you know it's we had a round maybe two weeks ago that um we haven't been back to the course and i don't think we will we <laughs> flew around the front nine in two hours yeah at our 50 minute break came yeah. back out and the, i think the back nine took us nearly four hours jeez just because ob everywhere everyone's reteeing their front and center and it's just <laughs> yeah real slow so uh, it's not too bad if if you can keep it moving. It's good fun, but you know, yeah. some of those days, you know, you get out there early, you're not home until you know three thirty. It's, yeah. it's a big day. But you just got to embrace it, don't you? And you've just got to come yeah, in you have with to. an open mindset. And mate, I, I I can't wait to have a, a couple of asahis at lunch because once it hits your lips, I don't, I don't think there'll be any any holding me back. Yeah. So, um, mate, I'll have That's to. Good. I'll have to have a few Asahis one time in the hour-long break at lunch and, and report back to you, let you know how I go. But um, <laughs> yeah, Especially after a, a long period of quarantine there, mate. You need to yeah, mate, get out isolation. and keep your webs out. It can weigh a man down, you know. It can weigh mm -hmm. a man down. Mate, so um, tell us, like, how you got into golf. Like, did you play a lot when you were younger or did you sort of pick it up later on? Um, yeah. No, so um, pretty much when I moved down to Canberra, you know, I grew up in Avalon on the northern beaches with big Jim Stewart. And we yeah. spent a lot of time outdoors just surfing and, you know, cruising around the beach, moved to Canberra and there's not a lot of uh, 
similar activities. So we had a good crew of boys are about my age that were you know, pretty keen to get out and hack up a few fairways. So yeah. we're pretty lucky in that sense. You know, um, Jared Butler and Blake Enever, we started. Um, and obviously I got pretty keen on it and um, quite a few of the boys joined up at Federal. So yeah. I was with uh, Tom Cusack, Sam Carter and Fards and Benny A. We all joined up there. And, so and did, did they sort you out with a decent deal or anything? Lessons. Did they sort you oh, out that, with sorry? a decent deal or anything like that for the Brumbies boys? Yeah, yeah. no, nah, they, we got a junior, had to junior rates and yeah. they got us there so they looked after us which is good yeah laugh it and then you know did it take you a while to get into it or were you hooked straight away i got hooked pretty quickly i was te uh, terrible like yeah. my hand eye coordination and never playing a lot of those tennis or you know golf growing up it's a bit tougher but um, yeah you know, put in a bit of time and still you know playing off 15 it's not it's not <laughs> sharp shooting but it's it's good fun yeah, exactly. Bogey golf's good golf. Yeah, exactly, 100%. And so, mate, we spoke about, you know, your drive, right? So talk to us about the rest of your game. What would you say, like, you know, for instance, last week on the show, we did a SWOT analysis with, with Fletcher Smith of his game. Mate, if you could give us a quick rundown on your game, mate, like where, where do your strengths and weaknesses lie? Oh, I think that's the problem. It's like one day things are working real well. You know, usually my mid and long irons aren't too bad and then I can't yeah. putt. And then other days the old putt is on fire, but I can't get to a green. So <laughs> it's, uh, I'm yet to string it all together. I'm usually good for about 12 holes. I got 12 holes of good golf for me and then the six seem to blow out pretty badly. And does that, does that come in between those 12 holes or is it just, you know, solid 12 holes at start and six shockers at the end? Usually it's the last six. I just start losing patience. I think I've got a, too much uh, short attention span. Maybe I need to work on my uh, my patience. <laughs> yeah, how good, mate. We were talking. I remember we were talking a while back. Did you end up getting some wedges over here? I did. Not over here. I got them back at home. Got, got them back at home. Set of, uh, got a new set of Cleveland RTXs, which are, yeah. are they been good around out? the uh, good around the short courses, mate. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, exactly, they're, mate. That brings premises. me. That brings me to something that I really want to bring up and very, very keen to talk about. Now, you've got a hole-in-one over here in Japan, right? Correct? Correct, yeah. Correct. Was it on, was it on a par three course? It was. On it was on a par three course. Okay, okay. Let's start there. Mate, tell us about it. Describe the hole. You know, what club were you using? How many bounces in the end? Give us a rundown. So it's a uh, hole number four at a little par three course that we play from time to time. It's, yeah. it's actually in pretty good condition, like meticulous as always with Japanese. Yeah. Uh, run a pretty tight ship over here. So no, it's a good little course and uh, at about 75 metres in and uh, hit a little uh, knock down 50 degree wedge, landed yeah. right at the front and rolled in. A few high fives and a couple of uh, bump hats. It was pretty yeah. good fun. Plenty of carry on, yeah. A little bit, yeah. Was. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so <laughs> probably too, too much, too much carry on. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> and mate, so like, I don't know, have the boys like over there with you playing at the moment, and the lads that were there? Did anyone bring it up that it doesn't count because it's a par three course? What's your opinion? Well, the year before we had a, a running bet going, and everyone who played. You had an Ichiman, which is, you know, $110 or something. Yeah. Um, and for anyone that got a hole-in-one in the round, everyone would pay him uh, an Ichiman. Yep. And, uh, so Quaha got it last season. Yeah, he got on, one. Like, yeah, on the shortest, on the shortest <laughs> uh, hole. It was like 40, I think it was like 40 metres or something like that. Yeah. 50 yeah. yards. Yep. Did a beautiful shot, went in, and so he was stoked. Got Nichima from about six of us because we're all playing. Yeah. And uh, made for a couple it? of rounds of golf. Did you? And so the running bet was off by then. Oh, no. Spewing. <laughs> and uh, so I probably celebrated like I just won, you know, a couple of Nichima. <laughs> now, mate, I'm going to just... Bell wasn't running. <laughs> Mate, I'm gonna go out there and say, it, mate, it's 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 not a real part. Uh, sorry, it's not a real hole in one. It's and and I, it's not. It's not. But I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll hold on to it until I hit a real one. 
Yeah, I would too. But, mate, the reason why I don't like it so much is because, you know, Terry Hill's par three course, you know, um, up in Northern Beaches there. Great little track. Yeah. Can play it there. Is a great track. Yeah, awesome little fun, uh, little fun course. Uh, so, you know, Rowan O'Regan, right? You know, big Rowan O'Regan. So yeah. we used to play out at uh, Marrickville a lot. And, um, you know, back in during, back during uni days. And we used to uh, go to Silvers. There's a burger place there all the time. We'd play around. We'd go to Silvers, Silvers and then we would go ha have a burger and then go to training. Anyway, we're heading out to catch up with uh, the Dove Man, Will Davies. Shout out to the Dove Man um, out at Terry Hills, par three. And on the way out there, he goes, you know, he's saying, oh, oh I'm going to get a hole in one today. I was like, no, you, know, you won't get a hole in one. Just, no, I'm going to get one. I was like, righto. Um, if you get a hole in one today, I'll shout you a Silvers Burger every time we go back, play Marrickville and have a, have a Silvers Burger. He's like, okay, sweet. Anyway, I think it was a 53 metre hole or something like that. It was like, he sculled it. I'm pretty sure he sculled it. And it's hit like the front of the bank at the front of the green. Trickled up, gone in the hole. Bulk carry on, bulk celebration. I was carrying on as well. And then I remembered, holy shit, we've just had a bet before we came here. And yeah. anyway, I had to pay for his burgers every time we went back to Marrickville. So that's why I have a really, really, uh, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the old holding ones on par threes. But no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I would have been much happier if I won the Ichimo. <laughs> yeah, mate, all that money. That would be pretty if you're on the other side of the ledger. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Now, mate, um, where is some of the best courses you've played, either over here in Japan or back home? Like Federal is pretty pretty up there, but um, yeah, where's some of the best courses you've played or, or a good golf trip that you've been on? Uh, so I managed to sneak out to Concord once. Yeah. That was uh, reciprocal with Federal. Yeah. Um, snuck out there for a round, and that's probably one of the nicest courses I've played. Yeah. Um, we actually got on to one of the, the nicer courses in the prefecture here in uh, Shizuoka called Seaside. Yeah. So that, I sent you a couple of videos from there. It's a beautiful yeah. lake style course, a bit yeah. more like home, normal cart with two people in it. Yeah. yeah. Fly around, you get, you know, in and out in four hours. It's a bit more, a uh, bit more like being back home, but you know, that costs you and I'm a leave. pretty penny. So that's a, yeah, that's a, a, a one off. I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, Federal and Royal in Canberra, I've played those a couple of times um, and they're beautiful courses. Yeah. Um, haven't yeah. really been on too many trips. I'm looking forward to doing a few more with my mates. They've been going down to, um, they've booked a trip in in April, I think, which I'm going to miss, unfortunately. So, so where's that to? Uh, I think it's changed. They were going up and going to do Mudgee and Orange, but I think it's, uh, I think, they're rebooking through COVID. I'm not sure where they're going at the moment. Yeah, okay. But, mate, just on Japan, like, the courses are just beautiful over here. The good ones, aren't they? And they're dry yeah. at the time of year, and it gets cold. But And it is and expensive. Easy. But, geez, yeah. there, there's some beautiful holes and some beautiful scenery in some of the courses out here. Yeah. It's, um, you know, they're, they're beautiful courses, but far out. Like, coming from Parks Golf, <laughs> where you can hit a slice onto the other fairway and still get back and try and get up and down for a bogey. You hit, you hit it OB and you're playing four of the fairway. It's pretty, uh, pretty tough shooting. Yeah, yeah. No, they are pretty tough because it's got the bamboo everywhere as well. They love water. Yeah. Love water. Love water. Uh, ridiculous. Yeah. Um, mate, one question we've been asking all the boys when they come on is sort of, um, you know, how, how does golf... Um, help your rugby game in terms of, you know, mental, physical, whatever it might be. But, yeah, can you give us a bit of insight? And I think, and I think we all share it in, a, in some sh way, shape or form, but, um, you know, definitely some tr transferable skills across both. And is there anything that stood out to you, any nuggets that you've got from golf that you, um, you know, take into your rugby at all? Oh, I don't know. I guess probably just keeping your expectations pretty low. I think that's the uh, <laughs> with rugby. You know, you get good breaks from bad bounces and things like that. Are you a pretty level-headed bloke on the, on the golf course, or do you get quite frustrated? Or uh, I do. Everyone gets frustrated playing golf. I think that's yeah. the uh, the beauty of it. Um, I guess I've definitely learned to keep my expectations pretty low. 
You know, yeah. you roll around 41 on the front and hit 50 on the back and, you, you know, you can get pretty heated. But no, yeah. it's, uh, it's a bit easier playing rugby. You knock a ball on, you get another opportunity straight away to, yeah. to get back into it. Yeah, 100%. And, mate, just in terms of scoring, what's the best round you've ever had? I haven't broken 80. I've hit 80 twice or three yeah. times and I've never quite never quite gotten over the hump. So. Yeah. And so were those days you were hitting 80, were you just playing out of your skin or were you lucky or? Not really, just yeah. chipping and putting. That's it. It's all in the short game, isn't Lots it? Lots of pass getting up and down. That's, uh, <laughs> That's it. You know, it's That's not rocket science, but yeah. Yeah. No, getting up and down. The best I hit it, I usually bloody walk off with you know, 95, 100. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're striping, striping every yeah. fifth ball yeah, or something just, like that, yeah. I'd hate to see my scoring average from the middle of the fairway. <laughs> we were speaking about it last week, you know, what would you rather? Uh, would you rather drive one up the guts and then chunk it or land your tee shot on a par three and three putt? Probably three putt. <laughs> Really? Probably three times. I hate chunking. Chunking <laughs> just, that, that's where you, you want to get me fired up. Chunking yeah. a few wedges, then that'll, that'll do it. It's a terrible feeling when you pipe one straight up the guts and then you're like, yeah, a little, yeah. little, you know, wedge, little wedge in and then you chunk it. Yeah. yeah. No, no good. Yeah. Um, and so, like, so off the tee, right? We spoke about your drive. Yeah. Right? Are you quite a, a thinker? When you get over over the ball, you know, or before you hit the ball off the tee, you're quite a thinker, or you sort of just grab grab that three iron, that driving iron, or grab the driver and just hit away and, and see what happens. No, I'm just tee it up on the right hand corner and play my little cut, my <laughs> weak little fade. Try and keep it in play. Yeah, yeah. And do you cut it with the driver as well? Yeah, I pretty much. Um, I had a little stint of trying to play draws that turned into disgusting duck hooks. So I've gone back to just playing a cut and keeping it there, <laughs> which makes it very hard in windy Japan conditions where you've oh. got a weak fade as you shot. The ball goes absolutely nowhere. <laughs> and does the wind, mate, you have to tell me, I haven't been here in the spring. We're coming up the spring, obviously. Does the wind die down a bit over the spring period here in Japan? Yeah, it does. Where we are, it's notoriously windy all year round. Yeah. Uh, water. Uh, but it definitely eases off. It's not that really strong southerly that you get that just is so cold and biting. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it definitely, definitely improves. But I hope you don't have hay fever because once those cherry blossoms come out, mate, you, it's something else. You'll, yeah, you're in trouble. Yeah. Well, I Every boy's I'll... just running around sneezing and rubbing their nose. <laughs> Historically, I haven't uh, suffered from hay fever. Stuff. I'll, I'll report back to you if I do, and uh, let you yeah. know, <laughs> mate. So, do you do you watch much golf as well, or you sort of just just a player? Or you you know, ever since you've picked up the game, have you have you gotten into watching them? Yeah, well, I've I've had a, a couple of shoulder recos, so yeah, um, a fair bit of time sitting on the couch, you know, get into PGA golf. Yeah, and then uh, from there. You know, start watching a few more PGA events and things like that. Yeah. And I think YouTube's got some pretty good channels to follow these days as well. So yeah. you know, a lot of those amateurs that are rolling around, like the Wesley brothers and yeah. uh, the Brian brothers. So, yeah. The good, 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 good boys. You see them? Yeah, the good, good boys. Yeah, watch a bit of their content. Yeah. So, no yeah, laying up. You watch no laying no up. No laying up. It's good. Yeah, some yeah. of their uh, matches. It's good fun. Yeah. No, yeah. So grind, grind a little bit, especially in isolation. There's been plenty of YouTube time. So. Get yeah. down the rabbit hole. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'm very much in the same situation there. Uh, mate, you mentioned your shoulder recos. Has that affected your golf swing at all? You, you know, how's your range? Is, you know, do you, do you ever go back to the old, oh, you know, the shoulder? She's a bit sore from my uh, two reconstructions and all that as an excuse or? No, nah, I'm pretty lucky it's on the, the right. So it's in, it doesn't have to have too much range. Yeah. I'm pretty stiff here to begin with, so. It's that's not good. a. It's definitely not a full free flowing swing. That's for sure. So. <laughs> and mate, if you were to say one PGA Tour player, right? Pick pick one of them and say you're like them on the golf course, or you play like them. Would you have someone, mate? No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, no, I don't bully the golf course. The golf course definitely bullies me. <laughs> Who's your favourite player to the watch then? I like watching Dustin. He's a pretty yeah. cool dude. Yeah. yeah. Just swaggers his way around the golf course. Same yeah. with John Rahm. I like watching him play. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I like John Rahm, actually. Yeah, his his short backswing. I yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that short. I'm not yeah. that short, but I'm not, not that powerful either. So. Yeah. Well, I tend to have a short backswing in all my shots. And whenever someone yeah. complains, or no, it's not complains, but says, oh, geez, you've got a short backswing, or tries to give me a bit of shit about it. So, mate, have you watched... Have you watched John Rahm at all? Mate, unbelievably short yes, yes. and the power. Yep. Although Just keep he, it nice, yeah, that's it, mate. Have you got any um like bucket list items or anything like that, like golf courses you want to play or tournaments you want to go to? Oh, look! Obviously, there's there's a thousand of them. There's so many good courses all over the world. So yeah, pretty keen to travel around Aussie a bit more. Go down to Tassie, do Bardugo, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, some beautiful courses in Sydney that I'm still yet to play. Have to get Davies to get us out to Eleanor and yeah, yeah, have a few rounds out there. But, uh, hey, Eleanor, unbelievable track. I can't believe yeah, you haven't been out there. I haven't, yet. Actually been out there. No, I haven't been out there since. Mate, hey, we'll get on the Dove Man and we'll get him to sort you out because that is ridiculous. It's like yeah. get Big Rob out there. Yeah, get Big Rob. Coaching. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Uh, never, never shy of giving you a tip, that's for sure. Very helpful, though, I might say, because I actually played my best round I've ever played out there. I think I got um, 14 over, so, you know. Oof. Yeah, and I, I don't know it's what it was. Mate, I think I was just having so much fun because of how good of a course it is that I was just, yeah. I was just playing all right. You know, when you're in one of those situations where you're like, I don't care how I play today. I'm just happy to yeah, play. Yeah, exactly. Keep yeah. those expectations low. Keep the expectations low. And that's, that, that was me all day. And I, was, uh, I couldn't believe it. And I didn't even realise how good I was playing as, as well until the end because you're just, you just, you just laughing. It's like a, you're in the middle of nowhere. Like you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere there. And just in the bush. Yeah. And it's got very, I mean, obviously I've never been to Augusta or anything like that. But it's got the, this real feel of, you know, you're in and amongst the trees, you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's got some awesome holes that sort of are up against like all these big trees and everything like that. Similar to like the 12th hole and, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know, out at, out at Augusta. So, mate, we'll call out Dove Man and we'll say, let's all get out there. Get me, get you yeah. out of there. Yeah. Us, good, get me, you, there, yeah. Rob, Rob and Will. We'll do that. Yep, sounds good. Good match play. <laughs> Best ball. Best ball, yeah. We'll, ta- we'll carve them up. We'll carve them up. Um, Mate, have you got like a, a golf yarn or a golf story that you want to enlighten us with? Or uh, I wasn't going to throw fards on the bus, but I uh, <laughs> hope you get a couple more rounds with it over the next couple of months before it finishes up and you can uh, witness a few of his driver helicopters into the trees. Yeah. It's, uh, it's good fun to watch him melt down. <laughs> Mate, we, were actually, we played over here in Japan and, the, and we spoke about earlier slow play in Japan. The man hates oh, slow yeah. play. The man no. hates slow play. He was getting so frustrated, um, and I didn't. I was, you know, I didn't get to see the helicopter come out that day. He was actually playing pretty good. Of course. Yeah. Oh no, he was actually all right. He was playing quite. He was playing quite well, but he yeah. was filthy with the slow play. And the thing was, the front nine you whipped around in maybe less than two hours. Then the back nine, every hole is like a, a drivable par four. So oh, we have to wait until, you know, everyone cleared off and yeah. getting filthy. So, um, but yeah, he loves, he loves a helicopter, does he? Yeah, that was his specialty. Nearly <laughs> lost a few drivers, I reckon. <laughs> and would the boys wind him up or was it just, just him on his own? No, it's tough to, watch. tough to watch. Just getting his own head. I think he, he, he had a few stressful things going on late his time in Canberra, heading over to, to Leinster and moving his wife and kid up out of camp or so. It's yeah. uh, interesting to watch it come out on the golf course. <laughs> Letting out all his frustrations. That's it. It's a bad right. place to be. You've got no patience left. <laughs> oh, how good. Mate, I think that's all we've got time for today, mate. Well, that's, that's all I have. Um, but, yeah, no, really, really appreciate you coming on and, and chatting a bit of golf. Um, great to hear 
you know, what you've been up to over here in Japan. And, mate, par three courses, like hole in one, it's a great achievement. But just in general, I think there should be more par three courses everywhere, don't you think? It's especially over here. It's it's a good change up. At least you can whip around and you know two and a bit hours and still get your golf fix for the week and not have to uh, sit down and absolutely. And even the one at the, the one at Terry Hills under lights, like how good is that? Oh, yeah. awesome! If you you know take a six pack oh, around, afternoon, sea breeze blowing. In. Yeah, yep, it's good stuff. I think there's one down in Cronulla as well. But other than that in Sydney, I'm not too sure. But let us know, whoever's listening out there, if we're wrong. But there should be more of them in Sydney, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they'd, they'd, get, a, they'd get a run, for sure. Uh, mate, yeah, again, thanks heaps for coming on. Uh, yeah, really appreciate uh, you sitting down for a chat. And, mate, we'll have to line up that match at Eleonora with, uh, with Will and Rob. Uh, Will and Rob, cool. if you're listening, let's make it happen. Yeah. Uh, when we're back. Will you be back in Oz in, in June? Yep, I'll be back there, mate. June, let's line it up. We'll call them out. Awesome. We'll make it happen in June, a little winter round in Sydney at Eleonora. But yeah, thanks again, mate. Really appreciate it. Guns and Good to talk to you, Izzy. Part of the week is back. Good morning, gums and non gums. Oh, it's an honour to get my gum, Captain. <laughs> mate, I am flushing them, mate. How are you doing? Know? Kind of the right amount of rowdy. Always stay the right amount of rowdy. And always remain the right amount of rowdy.